Hello and welcome back to Flipped Psychology. I'm Miss Lee and we are still in Unit 6 Psychological Disorders. This is Section 5 Personality Disorders and Other Disorders. Our objective in this video is to analyze the impact of psychological disorders on the individual, family, and society. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and grab your notes and let's get started. Okay, so let's start out talking about personality disorders. In general, personality disorders are characterized by inflexible and enduring behavior patterns of inner experience and behavior that deviates markedly from expectations of the individual's culture. In the DSM, we characterize different disorders into three different clusters. Cluster A includes the paranoid personality disorder, the schizoid personality disorder, and the schizotypal personality disorder. If you look at the descriptions in the chart, you'll be able to answer some of the questions in your guided notes. However, just in general, paranoid personality disorder exhibits a pattern of distrust and suspicion is that others' motives are interpreted as malevolent. In a schizoid personality disorder, there's a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression. And finally, in the schizotypal personality disorder, there's a pattern of acute discomfort in close relationships, cognitive or perceptual distortions, and eccentricities of behavior. So let's look at the schizoid personality disorder. Basically, in this personality disorder, there is a sense of emotionless disengagement. So the person really doesn't engage in any type of emotional exchange. And it's different from schizophrenia because it does not impair daily life. Most of these personality disorders really don't. They affect the person's relationships greatly, but the person who has the disorder can tend to have a job fairly successfully and kind of maintain a facade of being okay while in fact they have a personality disorder. In cluster B, we have the antisocial personality disorder. In this disorder, there's a pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. We're going to come back to this one in just a few moments. In the borderline personality disorder, there's a pattern of instability in interpersonal relationships, self-image, and affects, as well as marked impulsivity. So the person has a hard time maintaining relationships, doesn't always have a great relationship with themselves or their ability to kind of express their emotions, and they tend to have impulsive behavior. A person with histrionic personality disorder exhibits a pattern of excessive emotionality and attention-seeking, so there are a lot of outbursts. And in the narcissistic personality disorder, there's a pattern of grandiosity, the need for admiration, and a lack of empathy. Antisocial personality disorder. Possible causes include a childhood history of emotional deprivation, neglect, and physical abuse, as well as under arousal in parts of the brain. This disorder is very difficult to effectively treat because the person will likely lie, they tend to be very charming, and they can manipulate their way through therapy fairly easily. Studies of criminal tendencies show that risk factors at birth, including poverty and family instability, can lead to a higher predisposition to antisocial personality disorder. So let's talk a little bit about the brain differences in people with antisocial personality disorder. In a research study that was done, the researchers took PET scans of 41 murderers, which revealed reduced activity in the frontal lobes. If you'll recall back to the biopsychology unit, the frontal lobes are the part of the brain that are responsible for judgment and impulse control, and really a lot to do with our personalities overall. In a follow-up study, repeat offenders had 11% less frontal lobe activity compared to non-offenders. So do take a look at these scans on your screen and you can see very clearly the difference. In narcissistic personality disorder, the person has an unwarranted sense of self-importance. They really think that they are all that. And the person tends to think that they are the center of the universe and everything revolves around them. There is definitely a sense of entitlement with narcissistic personality disorder. So this last cluster includes avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. 
which is different than something that we've already talked about, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. We're going to get to those differences in just a moment. With avoidant personality disorder, there's a pattern of social inhibition, feelings of inadequacy, and hypersensitivity to negative evaluation. In the dependent personality disorder, there's a pattern of submissive and clinging behavior related to an excessive need to be taken care of. And then lastly, obsessive compulsive personality disorder includes a pattern of preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism, and control. In the avoidant personality disorder, the person diagnosed experiences a lot of anxiety and fearful sensitivity to rejection. They tend to be withdrawn. But keep in mind, with a lot of these personality disorders, the person does have the ability to maintain certain relationships and go on without the disruption to daily life with some of these other disorders. Okay, so let's talk about obsessive compulsive personality disorder or OCPD. In this personality disorder, which is not as extreme as as obsessive compulsive disorder, there's a preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism, and mental and interpersonal control. And this tends to be at the expense of flexibility, openness, and efficiency. A person with OCPD is preoccupied with details, rules, lists, order, organization, or schedules to the extent that the major point of the activity is lost. A person with OCPD might show perfectionism that actually interferes with the task completion, so they're not able to complete the project because of their overly strict standards not being met. This type of person is excessively devoted to work and productivity to the exclusion of leisure activities and friendships. A person with OCPD might be over conscientious, scrupulous, and inflexible about matters of morality, ethics, or values. And finally, a person with OCPD tends to be reluctant to delegate tasks or to work with others unless they submit to exactly their way of doing things. Do not get them confused though. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a disorder characterized by obsessive thoughts with corresponding compulsions. People with OCD are likely to lead lives where strict routines become essential and repeating tasks over and over again to find relief from their obsessive thoughts becomes a daily task. OCPD is a personality disorder which is characterized by an obsessive need for neatness, order, and symmetry. People with OCPD are more likely to be called neat freaks or anal retentive. So now let's talk about some other disorders that you might be interested in finding out about or that you've heard about. On your screen, you see some connected disorders called disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders. All of these disorders have some type of problem with self-control of emotions or behaviors. So you have oppositional defiant disorder, intermittent explosive disorder, pyromania, kleptomania, and conduct disorder. You might want to pause the video here so that you can read through this chart. The next grouping of disorders we're going to talk about are the neurodevelopmental disorders. Typically they begin early in development and they're characterized by developmental deficits that produce impairments of personal, social, academic, or occupational functioning. And again, I'm going to read out the types of disorders, but you might want to pause the video here so that you can read all of the information on the chart. Included in this family is autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Tourette's syndrome and intellectual disability. This used to be called mental retardation, but that term is no longer used. So let's talk a little bit about ADHD. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a psychological disorder marked by the appearance usually by about the age of seven of one or more of three key symptoms extreme inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. ADHD is three times more often diagnosed in boys. The number of ADHD diagnoses quadrupled after 1987. The National Institute of Mental Health, or NIM, claims that ADHD is heritable, so it does run in families. Common medications to treat ADHD are Ritalin or Concerta, and Adderall or Vyvanse. Non-stimulants are on the rise as well as supplemental medications to make primary medication more effective. So as we find out more and more about the effects at the neural level, we get better and better as a field of study to treat these symptoms. The next family of disorders are the somatic disorders. The common thread here is distressing somatic symptoms plus abnormal thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in response to these symptoms. We have in this family conversion disorder, 
We have illness anxiety disorder, which used to be called hypochondriasis, and then we have factitious disorder. You may want to pause the video here to read thoroughly through the chart. But let's talk a little bit about conversion disorder. This is also known as functional neurological symptom disorder. People with this disorder report the existence of severe physical problems with no biological reason. So they present to maybe an emergency room or their physician's office, and they have these extreme physical problems like blindness, deafness, or paralysis. Usually conversion disorder appears in childhood or adolescence, and typically the person is under extreme stress. Illness anxiety, which used to be called hypochondriasis. The person who has illness anxiety disorder has frequent physical complaints for which medical doctors are unable to locate the cause. They usually believe that the minor issues like headache or upset stomach are indicative of more severe illnesses. And they're not faking their sickness to get attention, but they actually believe they're sick with an illness that hasn't been diagnosed. People with illness anxiety disorder often switch doctors to search for a confirmation of their symptoms. So let's talk about the things that we have discussed in this video. We talked about the impact of psychological disorders on the individual, family, and society, in particular personality disorders and other disorders. In our next video, we will be talking about the treatment of psychological disorders. I can't wait to see you then. Bye for now.